Mr. Chairman. I apologize. I had to step out. As all of us know, there's like four meetings going on at the same time. So I, I wanted to slip over to uh, a couple of the appropriations, ask some, some key questions. I saw Administrator uh, Regan over there, so I told him he was, he, we, we get to see him a lot in this committee. Um, I want to say, uh, Ms. Stanton, thank you for coming. And um, I, I think putting a human face on what the actual uh, effects can be of something that's not addressed properly, that goes on for years. And um, I just appreciate your willingness to bring forward a very difficult topic for you, I'm sure. And I'm sure that your dedication is uh, is to, to make sure that this doesn't happen to anybody else. And and so I just I just want to thank you for, for being here. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity so much. It's, it's really important. Thank you. Um, Mr. Meehan, let's t uh, talk about a little bit, and I, I hope this isn't too repetitive where we've been. When I was talking with uh, Mr. Mandarolo, I was talking about the different systems, 137 systems or something like that. We have in West Virginia a lot of small systems. Obviously, you know a lot about the systems. Um, the cost of fixing this can be very expensive. Um, how do you envision our small water systems? What's going to be the best way for them to face this challenge? Is it repeated testing? Is it a national program for repeated testing? Is it a, uh, is it a DOD response that needs to be amped up uh, more uh, vibrantly? H how do you see this being able to help? I mean, we got a lot of small water systems in our state, so we understand the challenge. Well, the, uh, the challenge of small water systems is, uh, PFAS is just part of a whole range of challenges. Aging, right. workforce, uh, just maintaining cost. I mean, uh, I was just uh, at a meeting with the California Water Board that said 90% of their uh, violations of the, of the drinking water law is from communities of 500 customers or less. So it, there's stress there to begin with. PFAS, of course, uh, will, I, I was uh, in communication with our colleagues at the National Rural Water Association, and they can tell you that a lot of small communities say, let's take Region 1 New England. Uh, you know, I think EPA is requiring for their wastewater systems qu uh, quarterly, three samples a quarter. Mm -hmm. You know, it gets you up to a couple of thousand. And, you know, again, if you're a couple of hundred customers or connections, th these costs are going to be difficult for a small system, not for Chicago or Cincinnati but or D.C. water. But so um, there is no easy answer. I mean, it's going to require more resources. It's going to require resources from the ratepayers, uh, from the government, federal and state. And uh, uh, I think when it gets around to, let's say, when EPA promulgates an MCL, as it will on at least PFOA, PFOS, and maybe a few more uh, contaminants, they're going to build in a, uh, a system of regular monitoring, depending on the endpoints the, the MCL uh, sets. And hopefully, we'll see, as we've seen in other rules, a monitoring waiver kicks in after uh, a period of time, mm -hmm. a year or two, and then you get several years free from it. So that's all at the margin, though. If you end up getting to treatment, that's where you're, and then the O&M cost and the disposal cost, that's where you, mm -hmm. you really get into the big money. I will say in our water and wastewater uh, bill that we passed uh, unanimously out of committee in 89 to 2 on the floor, we did have a workforce component of that. That was part of my, we hear this all over our small water systems that, uh, while we're both a little sensitive to talking about an aging workforce, uh, we know it's happened everywhere, but particularly it's difficult in this situation. I don't think younger generations see this as a career, uh, a career path, you know, managing water systems and, and, uh, and, and being a part of that scientific community uh, as it's maybe they have a different view of it. But so we're working on that. We're working on that. Let me ask you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mandarola, I, I know what we're doing in West Virginia, and I really applaud you and your efforts and at the DEP and the legislature for stepping up to this. Are you in contact? I mean, how many other states, I'm sure you're part of a national organization, how many other states are being as aggressive as West Virginia in this? And, you know, couldn't we serve as a, you know, a shining star here to be able to show the rest of the country how you can um, uh, proceed and, and get good results without, you know, c completely upsetting the apple cart here? No, I agree. I. Th I I always think West Virginia is a shining star when it comes to 
uh, trying to be proactive on a number of issues. Um, I know, for instance, Michigan and, and um, a number of other states, Michigan comes to mind right now, Kentucky was one of them, but have done extensive uh, studies as well. Um, you know, my recommendation would be, there was a lot of fear when we first started this mm -hmm. study because the fear obviously was that we're gonna find this everywhere because in all of the national groups and organizations where that I belong to, when there's presentations associated with this, you're dealing with a lot of facilities as we've heard today around DOD sites. A lot of states have these DOD sites and they're finding it everywhere. <clears throat> we have the added bonus of having uh, you know, a C8 manufacturer in our state. So we were very fearful that we were gonna find it everywhere. You know, but the fear of not knowing it was far overcame mm -hmm. the fear of what we might find out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was extremely important for us to find out what we've got to deal with. Mm -hmm. And then when EPA comes out with a regulatory scheme for us to follow, we will have the information in the database mm -hmm. to take action and take action quickly rather than having to go out then and spend two years doing a study. So that, that was our thinking behind it. I, I think it was a good approach. We addressed every water system that DHHR tree, uh, regulates, which goes down to 25 people. So it's fairly extensive. Yeah, good. That's good. I think that's good advice that, to be on the front end to have the data ready. Uh, so that we can uh, meet the challenge. And, and uh, Mr. Meehan, maybe that's something that you can help through your organization uh, use this as an example of, uh, of how you can go about it and, and be, more, be prepared for what we know is coming uh, and, and, and have the data so we can use that science-based approach that I think is the best way for us to meet this challenge. We've exchanged business cards. So. Great. Thank you. <laughs>